raise your hand if already at this point you've had it with Oprah's bullshit. And this one set me into a blind rage, uh, pun intended. Oprah, all of a sudden, right, looks thinner than ever. Oprah Winfrey, one of the most successful and richest women in the United States, whose syndicated daily talk show was amongst the most popular of the genre. She starred in movies, produced movies, won awards. There was nothing this woman couldn't do, except lose weight. Losing the weight was the biggest battle that she just seemed to fail at, just like the normal people over and over and over again. No matter how much money, advantages, private chefs Oprah would have, she would continuously fail for years losing a bit of weight here and there from some weight loss gimmick or new fad diet, but then balloon straight back up, only for her weight to be constantly scrutinized by the media until recently. So let's walk through the history of Oprah's fight with her food addiction, her struggle with one of the most popular eating disorders, BED, to recently her body that shocked millions once she stepped out on the red carpet, and of course the controversy from many people who don't like how she lost the weight. This video is sponsored by me and my small company, Proto Bakery. If you like cake donuts, check out our now available chocolate cake donut with 10 grams of protein. I eat mine every night with almond milk and a side of Bob's Burgers. Thank you all so much for the support and let's get back to the video. Hello guys and gals, welcome back to my channel where I break down the internet drama so you don't have to scroll through TikTok, Instagram, and rot your brain. Come on, put the phone down. Let me do all of that for you. All you have to do for me to continue to rot my own brain is just hit the subscribe button. That's all. I'm almost to my goal of 800,000 followers. And I have to say thank you everyone, all the new people, all the people who just weren't subscribed and forgot. For hitting subscribe button, I literally can't do it without you. If there's any other way, does anybody want to let me know? No? That's it. Okay, that's all I ask. Okay, let's get into Oprah and why people are so mad about her weight loss. What a time to be alive. You know, people being irritated about someone finally winning the battle of their food addiction. Or is it justified? Well, let's see from the beginning. Thirty-seven years ago, the first edition of the Oprah Winfrey Show aired nationally, where watchers would watch the upcoming star voice her opinion about recent events. It was geared more toward pop culture. I'm Oprah Winfrey, and welcome to the very first national Oprah Winfrey Show! The network actually kicked Tom Snyder to the curb, and Oprah was the replacement. This was big at the time. The reviews came in, and many reviews were saying how Tom Snyder came across more as haughty and arrogant. But Winfrey, she appeared to be more playful, belligerent, and pretty much charming. There's like a charming sass behind her very strongly put opinions, and they absolutely loved it. So from there, Oprah would climb the ladder of success, but fall to the bottom of the pit when it came to one of the most common eating disorders. BED, and of course, obesity and not being fat. Binge eating is one of the most common disorders in the United States. It is similar to bulimia in that it involves reoccurring episodes of eating significantly more food in a short period of time than most people would under similar circumstances. However, people with binge eating disorder do not typically purge after an episode. Like bulimia, sufferers will say that they feel out of control. Symptoms include eating too quickly, even when not hungry, feelings of guilt, embarrassment, or disgust. It took me probably well over two hours to get here, but not before I stopped at the fast food restaurant. So while I looked at the receipt, I didn't even know what I had. Three Big Macs, two large fries, a couple cheeseburgers. I think I had a 20 piece nugget and that is less than a mile from here and I ate it before I got here. Many people think they have BED because they will overeat occasionally and then their stomach will hurt a little bit. Let me tell you, that is not BED. And according to many experts when it comes to BED, this pattern of excessive uncontrollable overeating has to happen at least once a week for over three months to be considered BED. There's almost nothing in this world that can compare to the feeling of taking that first bite when I haven't eaten in a while. And that was exactly what Oprah would be doing. And through the years, Oprah's weight would just be publicly scrutinized, talked about. One of the biggest questions would be, when the hell are you gonna stop being so fat? Well, I won the Miss Fire Prevention Contest. Was that a who? Miss what? Fire Prevention. So how'd you gain the weight? I ate a lot. 
No, 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 you said 50 pounds. You shouldn't let that happen to you. You're very oh, pretty. You know what? No, I don't want to hear. Fortunately, though, which I'm quite surprised, that through the years, many people loved, enjoyed, pretty much worshipped Oprah. And it's just surprising to me because she's chunky, black, and loud. Well, not loud. Opinionated. She became more and more successful, but her weight was always a topic to be brought up. And the diet companies would see that and would reach out to Oprah so that she could use their product, not be fat anymore, and sell millions! <laughs> Yes! Take the diet pill and our company will just be the... We'll make a lot of money. That's pretty much what all of the companies did, right? I mean, if you see a very, like a billionaires saying that she needs to lose weight or people are always talking about their weight, what are you gonna do as a diet company? Take our product, you lose the weight, we make the money, and we'll pay you. Uh, we are now AM Chicago, uh, in Chicago. We're, we're starting a diet with Oprah. Grace, yes. In, in conjunction with the Tribune, so that I have been put under pressure to finally do it. In November 1988, she showed off her figure after losing 67 pounds on a liquid diet and exercise. Because if I did it, if Scott did it, if Billy did it, you can do it. She got into a size 10 pair of Calvin Klein jeans for the first time. But according to Oprah, she didn't do it in the most comfortable way. A lot of you already know that what I did was, what I did was I fasted for without cheating for a solid six weeks. I had literally starved myself for four months, not a morsel of food, and the crowd would go wild. The liquid diet was Optifast, but like many people who do liquid diets, they usually fail, and fail hard. On the show, a slim-figured Oprah walks out wearing slim jeans, a fitted turtleneck, and stylish boots, while dragging a wagon of animal fat to illustrate how much fat she lost. And according to Oprah, the moment she walked off stage, she did what many people would do. I said to them when I went in with the counselor that six weeks into this, I know I'm going to eat something because I'm giving the wedding and paying for the food, so I intend to eat it. Two hours after that show, I started eating to celebrate. Of course, within two days, those jeans no longer fit. I feel like some of you guys are gonna be saying, that's not true, that's like, no, no, no way. I don't think non-bingers understand how much weight a binger can put on in a very quick amount of time. I don't think you know our potential of over-consuming food. I know this feeling. This is very similar to when I used to do bodybuilding shows and prep for shows. You would get super lean, super muscular, super veiny. Everybody would be complimenting my body. You look great, you look so healthy. I was actually under eating and over training and dying on the inside. Probably dying if I continued to do it. The only goal was the show and the trophy. Just like in Oprah's term, the only goal was to show everybody on that show that she lost weight and for some reason dragged out a wagon of animal fat. And after every bodybuilding show, what do you do? You eat a lot, but some bodybuilders take it to a whole nother level. And within two to three days, I would balloon up every single time. Then those compliments turned into quiet whispers of how fat I got. Except Winfrey's was not quiet whispers. It was on the news magazine and Joan Rivers. What? No, I don't want to hear. Oprah says ever since the Optifast liquid diet, her weight yo-yoed ever since. The girl was traumatized. By the late 1990s, Oprah Winfrey said that she had gained back most of the 67 pounds and even would say, I will absolutely never diet again. I told you, traumatized. Very much like a lot of the people in the fat acceptance community where they said that they would go on this really harsh diet. This is the reason why I can kind of feel for them, but at the same time, you kind of got to look at it and be like, well, I was doing a really harsh diet. No wonder I got traumatized. No wonder I quit. No wonder why I couldn't do that. A lot of people will do all these things. And I completely understand that it's like, wow, that was a lot. Never want to do that again. And they shouldn't. The thing that's wrong with the fat acceptance community is they use that as an excuse and say any type of calorie restriction, uh, is bad and they're about 300 pounds and oprah would get pretty big through the years in 1996 though she decided to go about it the more traditional way you know like the exercise routine method she would hire a personal trainer bob green saying her roller coaster weight saga was over and her wonderful personal trainer helps her control her weight by working out daily and using green's guidelines just stopping by bob's gym you're what Walking yeah. around the neighborhood. Was there in the neighborhood and thought I'd stop by Bob's gym. You do work out hard. I do. And you always do. So I'm not right now. I'm just warming up. Well, you're here. cruising pretty good. You're at a 6% incline. 6%. I'm 
we're gonna go all the way up to 15 people. So I looked up Green's guidelines, it wasn't anything new. It's something that most personal trainers would promote. Green recommends eating meals and snacks on a fixed daily schedule and gradually increasing the amount and intensity of exercise. Weight loss is slow and steady, one to two pounds per week, assuming you follow the exercise guidelines. Calorie budgets depend on activity level and range from 1,500 to 2,200. Very normal stuff. And in this picture, you can see Oprah's muscle and she looks happy. I know you can fake that, but you can see her muscles. She looks a little healthier. And she was under the impression that this was completely going to stick. Everything is fine. Well, you know how food addiction is. Around 1998, she would slowly start putting on weight again. This was around the time where she actually won the case when Texas Cattlemen tried to sue her after they claimed that Whitney's televised comments about mad cow disease caused the beef market to plummet and cost them millions of dollars. But she won, so I guess it was some happy weight. Free speech not only lives, it rocks. By the time 2006 came around, she would get up to 160 pounds. And according to Oprah, she would say that she felt like a cow. And the weight kept on increasing. By April 2008, she felt like skipping out on a taping with Cher and Tina Turner in Las Vegas. According to her, she felt like a cow and did not want to even look at herself. And at this time, she would have put on 40 more pounds from the previous years. I was so frustrated, I started eating whatever I wanted, and that's never good. For two years, Oprah would stay pretty stagnant, maintain, you know, that 200 pound weight, eating whatever she wanted, feeling like she had no control, and just being extremely frustrated. Until a company knocked on her mansion door. You know who was at that door. Weight Watchers. No pizza, no cake, no nothing. Do I stop living? No, start living on Weight Watchers Easy 123 Success. In October 2015, Oprah announced her partnership with Weight Watchers, becoming both a manager and a significant shareholder in the company. Weight Watchers would announce that they would be having a groundbreaking partnership to inspire people around the world to lead a healthier and more fulfilling life. Winfrey was compelled by the proven Weight Watchers program combined with new initiatives to broaden the company's mission to prioritize overall health and wellness. Many times you look in the mirror and you don't even recognize your own self because you've got lost, buried in the weight. The company and Oprah were extremely heavy on the health. Something else they were heavy on and a huge selling point to many that made the company really rake in a lot of money. I mean, help people. I mean, bring in the bread. Yeah, that one works. Is that you can eat bread. I love bread. Bread. And that's what always get them. If you can eat bread on a diet, people will think that the diet is magic. I don't deny myself bread. I have bread every day. Well, after a few months, the system would work for Oprah. You know, for the for the time being. And she would lose a whopping 42 pounds and be on multiple magazine covers and claim that she finally made peace with food. So every time I tried and failed, and every time I tried again, and every time I tried again has brought me to this most powerful moment. Telling everyone to join me and eat all the bread and pay me money. Originally, Oprah had 10% stake in the WW Empire. In the past few years, she sold off some of her stake and currently has 8%. In 2019, Winfrey signed an extension to the original deal that allowed her to buy 4.3% more of Weight Watchers stock. I mean, she should be allowed to make money off of this, right? Like, I know a lot of people are saying that she's doing it all for the money, but wouldn't you want part of this too? Or you just want to be the face and make less money? I don't know. You let me know in the comment section. I personally think it was a smart business move, but it does make you go, hmm, is this a wonderful magical system that helped you beat your food addiction or did you just do another diet? to make money. Let's be real, in the past she got paid to do Optifast, got into the zone, did the thing, rolled out the animal fat meat, and then right after, she said that she started eating right after the show. I intend to eat it. So is it something that can help people lose weight? Yes, but is it something that really helped her beat her food addiction? Um. Uh, mm. No. I'm passionate about WW's potential to reach and inspire even more people in the years to come. So yeah, through the years, people would look at Oprah and then look at Weight Watchers and be like, girl, you gave back that weight that you talked about on that, on that magazine cover. I don't think you beat your addiction. And they would continue to poke and talk about her weight constantly. Honestly, the only thing, cause I didn't watch Oprah growing up. My mom didn't watch it. She wasn't like a huge fan of her or anything. The only thing that I think of when I think about Oprah is that bread comment, her weight, and when she was like giving away cars. You get a car, you get a car, you get a car, everybody. But like mostly her weight and constantly being like, she ain't never gonna lose weight. 
<laughs> just because actually she was one of the people that like I saw her struggle with weight loss and I was like, she's rich as hell and she can't lose the weight. So now I can't. And then I discovered uh, calories and how to count them. Anyway, recently Oprah stunned millions of people when she graced the red carpet of her showing of the updated color purple with a new slim figure. And she didn't say nothing about Weight Watchers. A few months ago, Oprah actually discussed weight loss medications like Ozempic, Wegovy, and Monharo in her The State of Weight panel conversation, taped in July and released in September, where she said this clip that many are irritated about on TikTok. And even when I first started hearing about the weight loss drugs, at the same time I was going through knee surgery and I felt I've got to do this on my own. I've got to do this on my own because if I take the drug, that's the easy way out. Well, recently Oprah would walk the red carpet to the premiere of her new updated movie, The Color Purple, and TikTok would roll in with the Ozempic speculations and of course, resharing the clip when she said that she doesn't want to take an easy way out. People were furious for two different reasons. People felt that from the panel conversation covering Ozempic, she was shaming others for taking the easy way out if they took Ozempic. When she has paraded around for years promoting weight loss gimmicks, diets, selling toxic diet culture, and profiting off of all of it, and now all of a sudden, tools are the easy way out. And the second wave of people were angry because while on the red carpet, Oprah refused to reveal what she did to lose weight. She just said she's being more active and was even on the treadmill before she came to the carpet. What's going on? Because if this is Weight Watchers, please sign me up tonight. Well, it's it's not one thing, it's everything. Well, for days, people argued about whether or not she's using Ozempic, not using Ozempic. I mean, she did say that she didn't want to take the easy way out. Well, seven hours ago, while I was editing this and had to scrap quite a bit out, Oprah revealed that she is, in fact, using Ozempic. Good lord, woman. That's the easy way out. Well, it never said Ozempic exactly, but she did say she uses weight loss drugs. Oprah Winfrey weight loss journey includes medication, which she says is a gift. Well, it is Christmas season, y'all. According to Oprah, she shared how the medication has assisted in her recent weight loss in a People Cover story. Oprah says in the story that she felt so much shame through the years and taking the medication gave her even more shame. Over her long career, especially during the 25 years on her talk show, Winfrey, who's 69, has navigated weight loss and gain in the public eye. She told the outlet she was blamed and shamed constantly during that time. It was a public sport to just make fun of me for 25 years. I have been blamed and shamed and I I blamed and shamed myself. She remembered seeing a magazine cover with the title saying, dumpy, frumpy, and downright lumpy. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not funny, but it is funny. Like it would be funny and upset if I saw that about myself. Anyway, she said that she took the criticism as a personal failure. I didn't feel angry, she said. I felt sad, I felt hurt, I swallowed the shame, I accepted that it was my fault. Weight loss occupied five decades of space in my brain, yo-yoing and feeling like, why can't I just conquer this thing? Believing willpower was my failing. So people are calling her a huge hypocrite, but at the same time, she did try for years. The taping of that panel, discussion was in January, then released in September. That's plenty of time for her to change her mind. I mean, I'm sure many of you have changed your mind about something. You're just not in front of the camera. So over the months since the discussion on the panel, Oprah would realize that obesity is a disease. It's not about willpower, it's about the brain. Now this comment specifically made TikTok very happy. They do not like to hear about willpower. Many people from the body positive community would rather hear about it being a disease rather than making hard choices to not overeat. And according to Oprah, after after looking into the science behind the medication, she realized my own shame about it and consulted her doctor who prescribed the medication. The fact that there's a medically approved prescription for managing weight and staying healthier in my lifetime feels like relief, like redemption, like a gift and not something to hide behind and once again be ridiculed for. I'm absolutely done with the shaming from other people and particularly myself. And now people on TikTok, well, most of them, are praising Oprah. She really knows how to win over the people. I just made a video last week about how I wanted to spend 2024 destigmatizing weight loss injectables, taking away the shame, and I'm happy to see that Oprah Winfrey has joined the bandwagon. She just revealed to people that she uses weight loss medication as a maintenance tool. Well, best friend, Queen Oprah confirms that she uses the weight loss medication. 
I see nothing wrong with it. Now for me, I personally don't care how Oprah lost the weight. At least she told the public she's using medications. She was holding a lot of shame with taking the pill, which I completely understand. Because you know what people are going to say, oh, she took the easy way out, like she said. Gotta do this on my own. When in reality, when you take any of these medications, you still have to be at a calorie deficit and you still have to make the choice. And quite frankly, I don't think anyone needs or owes me an explanation of how they lost weight. I mean, people asked her and now many people just don't like the answer. Oprah is talking about eating healthy foods, working out, and using the medication as a tool. Not a complete solution, and it seemed to work out great. But that is the Oprah controversy that people are mad at. That's what I got from it, but what did you get from it? Let me know in the comment section. I would love to hear you guys' opinion. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 800,000 subscribers, and like I said, can't do it without you. Very easy. Okay, people who want to work out out there, um, we can start the movement train by just hitting that button real quick. <laughs> Remember, you guys, you do not have to be a size two. Big biceps to scare away olive oils is great, but not needed to be healthy. But health is extremely important. And if you are a binger, I personally suggest getting a hold of that willpower, the addiction, getting to the root of the problem before you start to mask it with Ozempic, weight loss drugs, or surgeries. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh, I've been on the flex since flex zone.